Flying cars have long been a staple of science fiction, but in recent years, electric vertical takeoff and landing, also called EV toll aircraft, have moved closer to reality. Companies like Archer Aviation are designing and building EV tolls with the goal of electrifying short haul aviation and revolutionizing urban transit. However, the road to EV toll certification and widespread adoption is a bumpy one, with regulatory hurdles, engineering challenges, and financial uncertainties to overcome. Will Archer and its rivals succeed in bringing EV tolls to the masses, or will they remain a technological novelty? Archer Aviation revealed its production aircraft, Midnight, to the public in November. Midnight is flown by a pilot and it can carry up to four passengers. It takes off and lands vertically, but it also flies forward on a wing like an airplane. Following its open house events in Palo Alto, the company previously developed a demonstrator aircraft called Maker to test out the configuration and functionality of its electric vertical takeoff and landing concept. The team at Archer expects to certify Midnight with the Federal Aviation Administration towards the end of 2024. The 8 meter long vehicle has futuristic lines and 12 propellers on its short wing, 6 in the front and 6 in the back. The front 6 rotate upwards during takeoff and landing like the US military's Osprey aircraft. Midnight is designed with a 100 mile range. Archer's strategy, however, focuses heavily on 20-mile back-to-back routes conducted in rapid succession. A typical route would be airport to city center for passengers in and around urban environments. United Airlines placed an order for 200 EV toll aircraft from Archer back in 2021, at a cost of $1 billion. In 2025, United Airlines aimed to fly an air taxi service between the downtown Vertiport Chicago and O'Hare International Airport. Using electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, it is purchasing from Archer Aviation. The Archer Midnight EV Toll aircraft will complete the route in about 10 minutes. That journey by car can take over an hour due to road construction. Archer made several big announcements late last year. The company revealed plans to build its manufacturing facility near the Covington Municipal Airport in Georgia. This site is expected to have the capacity to produce as many as 650 EV toll aircraft annually, kicking off initial production in the latter half of 2024. The EV toll developer also entered into a new agreement with Garmin. Garmin will supply the G3000 integrated flight deck for Archer's Midnight. The compact and lightweight system offers both an extensive certification pedigree and the configurability needed for Archer to bring its aircraft to market. According to the announcement, the large format displays and intuitive controls will provide pilots with the situational awareness needed to operate the aircraft. Archer's team is focused, at least initially, on launching in the US, although they see a lot of opportunity to expand globally once the network in the US is established. Vehicles like this one are aiming to become part of the urban transit landscape, ferrying passengers on short journeys. If successful, Archer and its rivals won't just change the way you get to the airport, they will prove out technology that could electrify aviation writ large. But the flying car business isn't for the faint of heart. Kitty Hawk, an EV toll company backed by Google founder Larry Page, went out of business last year, though its Boeing-backed joint venture, Whisk, survives. Archer went public in 2021 after being purchased by a blank check company during the SPAC boom. Since then, its market capitalization has declined from $3.7 billion to around $630 million. The largest EV toll startup by market cap, Joby Aviation, followed a similar path since its IPO, seeing its stock price fall more than 60% since 2021. But both have found some traction with airline customers. Delta Airlines invested $60 million in Joby, while United Airlines made a $10 million down payment on a future purchase of Archer vehicles. Archer CEO Goldstein is an investor who founded the company after spending time with aerospace researchers at his alma mater, the University of Florida. At the demo in November, he emphasized the quality of the engineering team he recruited. Many worked on electric vehicles at Kitty Hawk, Tesla, or Uber. Amusingly, a small number hail from Apple's special project group, seemingly confirming long-standing rumors that the computing giant has invested in electric vehicles. Decarbonizing air travel is difficult due to the physics involved. Even the best batteries still store far less energy than jet fuel, about 50 times less per kilogram of mass. 
Electrical motors are at least more efficient than internal combustion engines, but they also don't benefit from the reduction in mass during a flight as fuel burns. That's why Archer and its rivals are focused on short-haul flights, while academia and government agencies like NASA work to find better batteries that could enable replacements of jetliners. The first electric aircraft are already flying in test conditions. But the challenge for EV toll builders isn't necessarily engineering. Archer says it has completed structural assembly of the first vehicle intended for certification and operations called Midnight. It's building six of these aircraft to prove to US regulators that it is safe enough for their airspace. The flight demo in November was pre-programmed and remotely controlled, but Midnight will fly with a pilot. The reason is simple. Archer needs the approval of the Federal Aviation Administration if it ever wants to make money from building and flying these planes. And the FAA is widely seen as unwilling to unleash robotic air taxis over crowded cities. In 2022, the agency proposed temporary rules for EV toll vehicles like the ones Archer will build, and the bureaucratic process behind them will play out over the next year. The earliest these vehicles are expected to come into use is 2025. What sets Archer apart, according to COO Tom Muniz, who formerly worked at Kitty Hawk, is pragmatism. A lot of people attempted to design an airplane, go to the FAA and figure out how to certify it, Muniz says. That approach, he says, can lead to problems down the line if the FAA disagrees with the engineer's approach. Going back to the drawing board, for one issue can spiral into other aspects of the aircraft, leading to expensive redesign work. We need to focus on certification from day one, work really collaboratively with the FAA to figure out the certification requirements and design in parallel to get the most efficient path to market. That's a distinctly different approach than Tesla has taken with its electric cars, or Uber with its arrival in various cities. But aircraft regulation is taken far more seriously than the rules for building cars or operating a taxi service. The process isn't easy, requiring multiple steps of carefully explaining how the aircraft will operate and be manufactured, such that it keeps passengers and communities safe, and providing hundreds of pages of supporting technical analysis. FAA engineers evaluate this work and, if they are satisfied, approve it. Archer's attempt to bear-hug regulators into submission also includes hiring them. Michael Romanowski, a longtime FAA official, joined the company in 2022 as head of government relations. Archer hopes to have certification by 2024. Part of the challenge is that the FAA, which has approved over 2,000 aircraft types, has never certified an all-electric aircraft. Last year, it released its first set of guidelines for approving electric aircraft motors. The toughest questions will be about ensuring the safety of both passengers and the public, particularly given the hopes that these vehicles will largely be used in urban areas. Helicopter pilots we spoke about with Archer wanted to know what would happen in the event of a worst-case scenario. A full vehicle suffers an engine or powertrain failure while taking off or landing. Archer maintains its vehicle is safer than a traditional helicopter and is designed with no single points of failure. Each battery powers two engines, and each electric motor is designated with redundancies to keep spinning the propellers even if it suffers a partial failure. But the vehicle needs 10 operable motors to safely complete a flight, which means one battery failure could spell trouble. An Archer spokesperson said the vehicle's gliding capabilities are similar to a conventional fixed-wing aircraft, suggesting it could perform an emergency landing if it suffered a problem while in forward flight. Archer built the design for its vehicle with a very specific business plan. Trips of 10 to 50 miles around city centers where driving or public transportation takes an hour or more. With a payload capacity of 1,000 pounds plus a pilot, the company expects the vehicle to carry four people, but with baggage, the margins might be tight. While the vehicle is expected to have a range of 100 miles, the company is optimizing it to fly 20-mile trips with about 10 minutes of charging in between each one. Mike Leskiman leads United Airlines Venture Fund and partnership with Archer. At Archer's demo day, he described a vision of his customers no longer booking flights from Newark to San Francisco. Instead, they book a flight from, say, Tribeca to Menlo Park, with Archer's aircraft whisking passengers from convenient urban vertiports to major airports. The FAA has just released its first standards for these landing pads and points to the 800,000 drones it has licensed as an indicator of its ability to manage complex modern air traffic. 
Skipping the terrestrial congestion between the airport and final destination is the value add for Archer. While the company has not divulged the cost of making or leasing its aircraft, one route United has in mind, from the Manhattan heliport to Newark Airport, suggests wealthy urbanites are likely early customers. Archer says its goal is to make our service affordable for the masses. They note electric vehicles have fewer components and thus lower maintenance costs than those that depend on internal combustion engines. And they expect electricity will remain cheaper than the high-test fuels used by helicopters. Ultimately, the company says at launch, passengers can expect to pay a price comparable to the cost of a vehicle ride sharing service to the same destination. That's a big ambition. According to Uber, the average cost of a trip from Lower Manhattan to Newark Airport is $81, or about $20 per seat in a typical car, before tip. Blade, a helicopter service that flies this route, charges $195 a seat. From a purely climate-focused point of view, investment in public transportation is likely to do more to take fossil-fueled cars off the road than electric aircrafts. Certainly, mass transit is more efficient, in theory, though the patchwork of jurisdictions and regulations in the US make expanding rail or bus service slow and expensive. For perspective, Joby and Archer combined have raised $2.6 billion in private funding. A plan to refurbish and expand rail tunnels between Manhattan and New Jersey will cost some $16 billion. But there are still those 50,000 helicopters flying around the world. The promise of Archer and its rivals isn't just a world of low-emission flying cars, but demand for battery and electric powertrain technology that will help electrify all kinds of vehicles, especially including long-haul jetliners. What do you think about the future of electric aircraft? Let us know in the comments down below and remember to like, comment and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. And as always, hit that notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos.